Where were you? Okay, Mr. Bloom, proceed when you're ready. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, California's green sticker program for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles is an invaluable incentive program that has helped spur the purchase of zero emission vehicles. The future of the program, however, is in jeopardy. Last year, the decal limit of 85,000 decals was reached, and the program is set to expire at the end of 2018. As the end of the program approaches, the value of the decals and the incentive for purchasing a plug-in uh, hybrid electric vehicle will continue to diminish. AB 1964 will solve this problem by creating a new sticker program for plug-in hybrids after the current program expires. The new program will have neither a limit on the number of decals nor a sunset date. However, the program will only permit decals to be used for three years after they're issued, and this will increase the accessibility of the stickers while reining in the length of time that the stickers can be used. These stickers have been shown to incentivize the purchase of zero emission vehicles, and a recent study by the Center for Sustainable Energy showed that HOV lane access was an important purchase motivation for 59% of survey respondents. By 2025, at least 15% of the new cars sold by major vehicle manufacturers will have to be zero emission vehicles. These are very ambitious goals, and we should empower and equip vehicle manufacturers to reach the goals. I will be taking the committee's suggested amendments, including an amendment to set appropriate performance metrics for the program. And so when the plug-in hybrid vehicle market share reaches 8.6% for two consecutive years, the decals will stop being issued. AB 1964 will create a sustainable, long-term program that will help meet the state's zero emission vehicle goals. And uh, with me here today to answer questions and add a few comments is Gene Urban, representing the Alliance of Auto Manufacturers. Mr. Urban, please state your name for the record and who you represent. I'm Gene Urban. I represent the Alliance of Automobile Manufacturers. Um, we strongly support this measure. As the author said, the ZEB mandate requires that 15% of new vehicle sales in the year 2025 be ZEVs. Last year, it was 3%. The year before that, it was 3%. California and the auto manufacturers have created a wonderful model public-private partnership but we are being honest, the ZEV mandate is extraordinarily challenging without the active participation of the state. It's gonna be daunting to make it. We support financial incentives. Today we're here asking you for a very important non-financial incentive. We believe the continued availability of green stickers is a prerequis prerequisite to us making the ZEV mandate. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, our th the three-year cycle provision is our effort to balance the need for a good incentive with the need to address the congestion or HOV lane degradation issue. We think we've struck the right balance in that regard. So we support the bill and would ask for a yes vote. Please state your name and who you represent. Mr. Please. Chair, members, Julie Malinowski Ball, representing the California Electric Transportation Coalition, and support as well. Uh, we be, we support actually what the governor is trying to do in his budget about dealing with the green stickers today. Uh, but the question is, what's going to happen then thereafter? That uh, we uh, support having that conversation, and we actually support the the amendment in the bill. Uh, it kind of reflects a more thoughtful nature on how we look at these going forward. And ask for your I vote. Thank you. Please state your name and who you represent, please. Mr. Chair and members, Aaron Nimala representing General Motors, also in support of the bill. Um, as uh, the other uh, two uh, folks who testified indicated, the ZEV mandate requires manufacturers to sell a specific number of vehicles by 2025. That's an unusual way of going about reaching a particular policy goal. And so manufacturers need all the help they can get in order to meet that goal. At this point, um, we would have to sell nearly five times as many of these cars as we currently do um, by 2025 in order to meet that goal. And we have found in our market research, this is the single biggest factor in making that difference. So we urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please state your name and who you represent, please. 
Mr. Chairman, members, Theo Peos on behalf of Ford. Uh, while these cars are getting better and better, clearly there are still a number of natural impediments to make it difficult to own one of these vehicles for a number of families. So we think as many incentives as we can reasonably give uh, helps with sales. And for those reasons, well, we support the bill. Thank you. Say your name. Who you uh, Mr. Chair, members, uh, Ryan Candy, Clean Energy, in support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Margaret Gladstein, on behalf of Global Automakers, uh, for the reasons previously stated, we are also in support of this measure. Thank you. Next speaker. Mike Carpenter, on behalf of Toyota, and from our company's perspective, this HOV incentive is extremely important in our ability to move these cars. Thanks. Thank you so much for that. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none, any members of the public or the committee that would like to uh, ask questions of the author? I, Mr. Linder. You know, I, I just want to thank you for bringing this bill forward. Uh, I've been very supportive of green sticker bills. I've co-authored uh, um, some of these bills in the past, uh, authored legislation to uh, to have reduced fees or even free uh, toll lane capacity uh, for these vehicles. Uh, and, and even, as you have seen uh, just moments ago, tried to, to get as many of these uh, cars in the hands of pe uh, people that uh, typically couldn't afford them. So you have my uh, support, and I'm glad to, to help out any way I can. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Uh, Mr. Leonard, was that a motion? So moved. Uh, and I have a second from Mr. Dodd. Um, Mr. Bloom, would you like to close? I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you for taking the amendment, the suggested amendments. I do, I do appreciate that. You're welcome. With these amendments, I think the bill is a clever way to continue the HOV access uh, incentive in a way that continues to spur the market growth, yet balances the need to operate the HOV system. And with that, I met with the coalition today and I completely agree that we need to continue to work towards incentives to get more of these on the road. Uh, with that, I'll be supporting your bill. Thank you. The motion is due pass as amended to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Aye. Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Aye. Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Medina? Aye. Medina, aye. Melendez? Nazarian O'Donnell Garcia I we have eight uh, we'll leave the roll open for the absent members we'll get there. thank you mr. Bloom mr. Rodriguez you ready to present no, mr. Garcia. mr. Garcia I mean mr. 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 Garcia then I are you presenting for mr. Rodriguez also on the second one okay yes sir mr. chair Although uh, I am not Assemblymember Rodriguez. Well, we uh, knew in, that he sent a letter. In the elevator, I have been greeted as Hello, Freddy. Uh, <laughs> and I think so, you have a little more hair. Maybe. And yeah, there's just less. He is hair. the most valuable player, though, from our softball game, so I, will, I won't take that from him. Who rocked who? That's right. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, AB 232 is a straightforward bill that ensures municipalities receive their fair share of taxes collected on private sales of vehicles. It accomplishes this by requiring private vehicle transactions to be assigned a specific tax area location by the DMV so that the Board of Equalization can properly uh, identify and allocate these taxes collected. Uh, in 2014, DMV reported approximately $65 million in activity related to an estimated $2 million private vehicles and vessel registrations. Put simply, this bill ensures that the city where the private sale took place receive its portion of taxes collected. Uh, here to provide technical support uh, and uh, on this bill is Dan Kerrig with the California League of Cities. Please proceed. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman and members, Dan Kerrig with the League of Cities. Uh, the the uh, author um, explained the bill well. Uh, this is sort of working between two agencies to make sure there's the right information that, that the tax can be um, allocated accordingly. So appreciate your support. Thank you for that. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Any members of the public that would like to s testify in the opposition of the author's bill? Seeing none, any questions of the committee for the author? We have a first by Mr. Linder. Second by Mr. Dodd. 
Thank you so much. Um, On behalf of Assemblymember Rodriguez, respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Garcia. I will be supporting Mr. Rodriguez's bill today. I will urge him and the sponsors to keep working with the BOE and the DMV to possibly find an administrative solution. It's so often that we look for legislative solutions when, when the agencies should be working together harder to make these things happen. With that, I will be supporting the bill. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is due passed to the Assembly uh, Revenue and Taxation Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Aye. <clears throat> Bloom, aye. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Dodd, aye. Eduardo Garcia? Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Kim? Mathis? Medina? Aye. Medina, aye. Melendez? Nazarian? O'Donnell? That has eight. We'll leave it open for absent members. Mr. Garcia, would you like to present 2415? I'll do that, Mr. Chair. And members, uh, let me begin by accepting the committee's amendments to AB 2415. Uh, this bill ensures that the state is prioritizing the deployment of cleaner engine technology in the heavy duty truck market that will help reduce air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions while at the same time accelerating the retirement of older high polluting trucks. Specifically, 2415 does the following. It requires the Air Board to dedicate 50% or $100 million, which is whichever is greater of the funding we make available to them in the annual budget process for the deployment of incentives for heavy-duty trucks. This bill would take effect in the 2018 and sunset in 2023. The bill also prioritizes our heaviest of trucks, those weighing 26,000 pounds or more, or put another way, or put another way uh, many of the rigs we see on our freeways today. Uh, members, cleaning up our air while producing green, reducing greenhouse gas, in particular important to parts of the state, including my district, Imperial County. Uh, California is home to two air districts with the worst air quality in the country. Uh, that's the South Coast Air Quality District and the San Joaquin Valley Air District. Uh, so I respectfully ask for your eye vote. You have members of the public uh, to testify in support? Yes, we do. Please identify yourself and who you represent, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Todd Campbell. I represent uh, Clean Energy as our Vice President of Public Policy and Regulatory Affairs. It's a company that uh, does, uh, produces renewable natural gas and natural gas as a transportation fuel. Clean Energy has been a longtime supporter of California's air quality, climate change, and petroleum reduction goals, and that is why we are in support of AB 2415. As Member uh, Garcia noted, AB 2415 will seek to address major uh, sources of greenhouse gas emissions representing 14.8% of non- or on-road emissions with, uh, while con constituting only 1.2% of the on-road vehicles. Heavy-duty trucks are also the number one source of pollution for NOx uh, in the South Coast and San Joaquin Air Basins. Additionally, heavy-duty diesel trucks are the largest source of toxic emissions as identified by the South Coast Air Quality Management District's multiple air toxic study. In fact, the Air District's research identified high levels of toxicity generated by regions, uh, the region's good movement system, strongly correlating with the majority of disadvantaged communities as these communities are often located adjacent to freeways and highly tra traveled corridors. As you may also know, ports are powerful economic engines to our state, providing hundreds of thousands of jobs to California families. Without strong access to incentive funds that will enable truck operators to purchase clean trucks, I fear that these communities will continue to uh, remain at risk for decades to come. You will hear uh, today, possibly from opposition, that there are plenty of other state funds available to help implement the California Resources Board's vision of replacing 100 to 150,000 near-zero emission trucks on California's roads to, uh, by uh, the 2023 federal ozone deadline. I would note that today, with all the programs that they cite, um, that the opposition has cited, that um, have been ex in existence for years, there are less than 1,000 heavy-duty trucks currently in the goods movement system. Finally, um, you might uh, also hear um, some uh, opposition from uh, transit property concerning AB 2415. Um, I would note that if we are not able to conform uh, by 2023 with the federal ozone standards, 
I think significant, um, the, the threat is a federal implementation plan and the loss of federal transportation funds, which could be in the billions of dollars, uh, which is why the regional uh, 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 planning authority, the Southern California Association of Governments, is in strong support of AB 2415. In closing, AB 2415 provides much needed signal to industry that near zero emission technology combined with renewable fuels is needed. Uh, to help meet the state's looming AB32 air quality and petroleum reduction goals. And for that, we are in strong support of AB2415. Thank you so much. Next speaker, please state your name and who you represent. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Julia Levin with the Bioenergy Association of California. We represent more than 50 public agencies, local governments, and private companies, environmental groups, and others that are working to convert organic waste to energy. And that can be dairy waste, that can be forest waste removed to prevent catastrophic wildfire, it can be food waste, agricultural waste. Instead of burning that waste or putting it in landfills, we can convert it to the lowest carbon transportation fuels in existence, the only transportation that can be carbon negative. Um, in addition, by putting it into ultra-low NOx heavy-duty vehicles, we can cut NOx um, smog forming pollution by 90% or more. We can cut greenhouse gas emissions from these vehicles by as much as 300% if we use dairy biogas or 200% if we use biogas produced from organic waste that otherwise would have been landfilled. There is no investment this state can make that will reduce air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector more quickly than investments in these ultra-low emission heavy-duty vehicles that run on renewable biogas generated from organic waste. So we strongly support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please state your name and who you represent. Mr. Chair and members, Joe Devine on behalf of UPS in support. Thank you. Next speaker. Lawrence McCormack representing Cummins Westport in support. Thank you. Mr. Chair members, David Jones on behalf of the City of Murrieta in support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Israel Salas with Southern California Gas Company in support. Darren Chitsi with the Southern California Association of Governments in support. Thank you. Tim Carmichael on behalf of the California Natural Gas Vehicle Coalition and its 25 members in support. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of the author's bill? Seeing none, members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill. Seeing none, okay. beg your pardon. Please state your name and who you're representing. Please come on over to the other side. Good afternoon, chairs and members. Sure. My name is Yana Vasquez. I'm here on behalf of Sierra Cup, California. We're here to strongly oppose AB 2415 by Assemblyman member Eduardo Garcia. We support the intent of the author to achieve air quality benefits in local communities through deployment of clean, heavy truck, um, heavy duty truck technologies. However, their current incentive programs, um, like the individual from Clean Energy indicated, that are currently funding these different technologies, specifically from CARB and the California Energy Commission to actually support new clean technologies from natural gas engines and to ensure funding is available to assist both existing and emerging technologies in the sector. The effect of AB 2415 will be to apply new funding restrictions from 2018 through 2023 that will eliminate investments in a range of clean fuel vehicle technologies needed to move California to a cleaner future. We oppose this bill given that these monies will come directly from the California Clean Truck Bus and Off-Road Vehicle Equipment Technology Program, which are intended to accelerate the commercial development development of existing zero to near zero emission heavy duty truck bus buses. These monies are intended to get the most advanced technology in place that will reduce greenhouse gases. It is entirely inappropriate for GGRI monies to be used for advancing natural gas. Method which composes about 90% of natural gas, which is extremely potent greenhouse and short lived climate pollutant, estimates of its global warming potential that is how much more dangerous of a unit of methane it's compared to with a unit of carbon, ranges from 23 to more than 84. That means more than 84 times as potent as carbon in creating climate change conditions. As mentioned before, there are many sources of funding for natural gas engines. Using these monies on natural gas trucks will take funding away from true zero emissions or near zero emissions technologies that will eventually impact directly the communities we're trying to actually save and disadvantaged communities. And for these reasons, we strongly oppose this bill and respectfully ask for your no vote on this bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Bonnie Holmes Jen with the American Lung Association in California. And of course, we are very focused on the mission of improving air quality and health in local communities and uh, deploying the cleanest possible heavy duty uh, technologies. And we are opposing this bill just because we think this, this is the wrong solution that, that you have in front of you here. Um, we do believe that the current, the current ARB and Energy Commission incentive programs are working together very well. Um, and unfortunately, what this bill would do is take, would take funding out of an important GGRF funding pot without getting all the air quality and climate benefits that we need. And the effect, as um, uh, Ms. Vesica has stated, would, would be to limit investments in a range of clean fuel technologies that we really need to move forward and achieve our, our air quality and climate goals by setting aside the $100 million or 50% uh, for one technology, we would take away funding from electric and fuel cell options, including hybrid electric trucks and, and buses and uh, uh, cleaner freight vehicles and equipment that can dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions through uh, zero emission options. So this is, this is the reason we're opposing it. And, and in fact, there are a lot of uh, proposals out there there's, there's proposals out there right now to increase funding for this category of project in another pot, the, the AQIP pot, that, pot that's being discussed today over at the ARB. There are other pots of funding, as were mentioned. Um, because I won't go on further because of the limit of time here, but would respectfully appreciate um, your opposition until the author addresses these concerns. Next speaker, please state your name and who you represent. Uh, Steve Wallach on behalf of the Alameda Contra Costa Transit District and the Center for Transportation and the Environment. CTE is a, a nationwide nonprofit that uh, does research into the development of commercialization of zero emission uh, vehicles. Um, we feel it's not appropriate to kind of carve out these funds for one particular um, type of technology. It needs to be used to develop and commercialize a wide range of zero emission technologies, including battery electric hydrogen, as well as, I mean, I guess some use for natural gas, but it, this, is, this would very much limit um, the airport's ability to actually uh, get those uh, technologies to commercial readiness. Thank you. Next speaker, state your name and who you represent, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Moira Top here on behalf of the Orange County Transportation Authority. Regrettably, we are here uh, with a position of uh, oppose and less amended. Uh, we, too, share the concerns about the uh, shoehorning of one particular type of uh, uh, solution for this problem. We would like to see the bill amended to include uh, transit projects. We think transit projects are a vital component to addressing the state's AB 32 goals. Uh, we ask for your support in those amendments. Thank you. Next speaker, please state your name and who you represent, please. Audrey Derver on behalf of the Union of Concerned Scientists, also in opposition. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the author's bill? Seeing none, any questions of the committee of the author? Mr. Garcia, would you like to close? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. You know, uh, we are committed to working with um, the opposition and uh, molding this bill to um, their uh, liking. Uh, let me just be very, very clear that, that nowhere in the bill does uh, natural gas vehicles get a preferential treatment? Uh, we're looking at vehicles uh, that would uh, set the standards uh, for NOx emissions, uh, for smog-forming pollutants and greenhouse gas reduction emissions. We um, are looking at the standard being the 26,000 and one pound vehicle uh, and above uh, in order to achieve these goals through this uh, policy. Uh, that means that electric vehicles, diesel uh, vehicles, hybrid fuel cell, and natural gas vehicles are all eligible um, to receive these funds. And so I just want to be very clear that there is no uh, specific preferential uh, treatment being set forward for one particular type of vehicle. So I just want to make that uh, clear uh, to the committee, to the public, and uh, at this time respectfully ask for your eye vote. Uh, Mr. Garcia, thank you very much for bringing your bill to our committee today and again uh, accepting the committee uh, amendments uh, going forward. I do really appreciate your, that your bill focuses the discussion on cleaning up the heavy truck industry yeah. as a whole. These vehicles are among the dirtiest around and given the number of communities surrounding freight corridors and hubs, this is really where we need to focus our efforts to achieve near-term benefits and best value. I will be supporting your bill today based on it, and I want to thank you for going to Paris with the governor on a champion for climate change. 
Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please? We don't have a motion. We don't have a motion. Hmm. That's uh, Mr. Mathis and Mr. Kansan Chu. Uh, we, so we have a first and a second. Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? The motion is due pass as amended to the Assembly Natural Resources Committee. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Linder? Aye. Linder, aye. Baker? Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom? Not voting. Bloom, not voting. Brown? Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Daly? Dodd? Eduardo Garcia? Eduardo Garcia, aye. Gomez? Kim? Medina? Aye. Medina, aye. Melendez? Nazarian? O'Donnell? Aye. O'Donnell, aye. That has seven. Uh, we'll leave the roll open for absent members. Um, thank you, Mr. Garcia. So I am going to hand, which I just did, the gavel, Mr. Mathis. Uh, 